If you take a dietary supplement, do me a favor and grab your bottle. Take a look at it. Do you think that it was approved by the FDA before you bought it? Was it required to be safe and effective before being sold? Here's the thing, no. Unlike food additives or drugs, supplements do not need to be proven safe or effective, nor do they need the FDA's approval before being sold. Since 1994, we've seen explosive growth in supplements, 500% in revenues. Um, from 1994, 4,000 products to an estimated 90,000 products, wow. Not one of them is required to be proven safe or effective. Not one. Make sure you stay at the end of this video and I will tell you the three most common um, adulterated or impure supplement categories. And if you think you know, leave something in the comments. I'm Neely with Neely on Nutrition, providing you with unbiased, relevant health and nutrition information so you can make an educated, informed decision. My interest in dietary supplements goes way back to when I was a kid, a chubby kid. Um, I was teased um, a lot about my weight um, and um, yeah, it bothered me, obviously. I came across an ad for a supplement in a magazine. Um, this was way before the internet. And I'm sure that I was seduced by the promising headline of miraculous weight loss. I told my mom about it. I told her that I wanted it. And she's like, honey, don't pay attention to it. It's a ripoff. It wouldn't do anything for me. <laughs> I didn't believe her. So I secretly saved some money and I went and bought it myself. <laughs> I didn't learn my lesson until decades later after spending hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. And I had a whole lot skinnier wallet, but not a whole lot skinnier me. Um, how much did I have to spend before I learned? Lots. Now, even though that happened long before 1994, something happened significant in 1994. The Dietary Supplement Health and Education Act, or what we call DSHEA of 1994 was passed, and it resulted in this huge growth in the supplement industry. Types of dietary supplements include micronutrients, what would be like your vitamins and minerals. And then we also have the macronutrients like your amino acids, um, your protein, as well as fatty acids like omega-3s and fish oil. Um, also herbs like St. John's wort, ginseng, ginkgo biloba, um, phytochemicals like um, resveratrol or flavonoids, for example, and then other things like your probiotics, gluco glucosamine, chondroitin, melatonin, creatine, um, CLA, conjugated linoleic acid, bee pollen, all of those are supplements. If you took a multivitamin this morning, regardless of the form, whether it's a pill, a powder, a liquid, a gummy, it's a dietary supplement. Um, other products that you might have purchased, maybe you purchased a probiotic that promised amazing gut health or the scoop of greens that you put into your morning smoothie. And I'm not talking about a handful of like spinach or kale. No, I'm talking about the scoop from a container of this mir these miracle greens. Or maybe you saw something on Facebook, a product on Facebook or Instagram in your feed, and it's plugged by an influencer, be a friend or family member that's involved in some multi-level marketing company. Yeah, all those fall under the category of dietary supplements. What is DSHEA, the Dietary Supplement Health and Education Act? The bill that eventually became DSHEA was proposed by Senator Orrin Hatch of Utah, a state, by the way, which has one of the largest um, concentrations of supplement manufacturers, not surprisingly. Um, but in, 19, um, in April of 1993, he uh, proposed a bill and it became law in um, about a year and a half later in 1994. The intention was that it was gonna promote the health of Americans by ensuring easier access to dietary supplements. And it shifted the burden of proof from the manufacturer to the FDA. So the manufacturer didn't have to prove anything that it worked or contained what it said it contained, but it was the FDA that needed to pro provide that burden of proof. According to Deche, a product is not required to have proof it works, um, have proof the ingredients listed on the bottle or in the package are there, have proof the ingredients are free of contamination, provide warnings of any potential side effects, or meet any standards of potency or dosage. Does that bother you? It bothers me. The net effect of Deche was a deregulation of the supplement industry. 
And no wonder there was this explosive growth um, in the amount of products that we have um, on the market now. You know, there are no standards for potency or dosage, no requirements um, for providing warnings of any potential side effects. Should a problem arise, the burden of proof falls to the FDA, and only then will it be removed from the market. So it's already on the market, so the FDA can remove it, but the manpower it takes to do that with the amount of products, although the law limits what can be said, many unsubstantiated claims are made all the time <laughs> by less than reputable manufacturers. It might be years before the FDA takes any action. Although manufacturers are required to, he to adhere to um, good manufacturing practices, um, compliance in those programs is very questionable. Also, claims like diagnose or cure or treat or prevent a disease, they're not legally allowed um, for a supplement. Um, the only rule is that um, a supplement has to have this statement, which I'm sure you've probably seen. The statement has not been evaluated by the FDA. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Now, so a product can't say anything about like, helps with your diabetes, but it can say something like, helps with your blood sugar. Okay, I know, it's a very, very, very fine line. Um, and by the way, if you're um, liking this information, do me a favor and give me a little boop, give me a thumbs up, let the algorithm know that you like it and you want to see more of my content. And also subscribe if you're not um, a subscriber. So what can you do? I'm going to offer you three things. Now there's more than these things, but there's just three in particular that I want to uh, make mention to you. Number one, don't pay for what you don't need. Now a product may look like it's got all of this stuff in there, all these amazing ingredients, this proprietary blend. But after reviewing hundreds of supplements over the many years that I've been looking at them, many of the ingredients are in such tiny amounts that there's no clinical benefit whatsoever. Number two, look for um, seals of approval. Now, these seals don't guarantee effectiveness of a product, in other words, that it may or may not work, but at least it's been shown to be free of contaminants um, and the ingredients listed on the label are in the product. And I'll have links to um, all these in the description as well as some other resources for you so you can learn more about them. Now there are um, organizations that offer programs include um, the um, US Pharmacopeia, USP. Um, you'll see that logo. There is the NSF International Dietary Supplement um, Certification as well as consumerlab.com has an approved quality product seal. Their approaches are all different and um, explained on their um, respective um, websites. And number three, be cautious. If the person, it could be a doctor or a nutritionist, um, tells you that you have a certain condition or run some tests that have a certain condition, oh, by the way, they also have the products, um, they're selling you the products to fix that condition, that to me, it's a huge red flag, so be cautious. Let me give you a bit of good news, okay? There are four consumer groups um, that have your best interests at heart, and they're proposing to Congress that um, there are some much needed sweeping reforms need to be made in the supplement industry, and they're calling that um, Deshay 2.0. So make sure you're a subscriber and I'll keep you updated on um, what's going on there. But, um, you know, just, I wanna make note, I am not anti-supplement. I am anti, don't take advantage of people and have them waste their money. That's my issue. And unfortunately, there's lots of bad actors that have given the good actors, you know, a bad name. So, um, yeah. I promised you I would give you the three most adulterated product categories of supplements. And those include, um, number one, weight loss supplements. So weight loss supplements may contain um, illegally added weight loss drugs or banned substances. Um, or um, second category is physical enhancement like the bodybuilding type um, supplements and they may contain um, illegally added anabolic steroids or also unbanned substances that are not on the label that are in the product. And that's what that product testing, um, those certification sites, um, sites though and the verification programs. Um, and then the third category is male enhancement. So it may contain illegally added Viagra or Cialis or um, other drug for erectile dysfunction or anything else that we really don't know. So it's really buyer beware in the um, supplement industry. 
And remember though, nothing takes the place of a wholesome, nutrient-rich, minimally processed, plant-based diet. Yeah. Thanks for watching Neely on Nutrition. We'll see you in the next video. Take care.